Hi everybody, it's Kara. I wanted to do a tutorial on how to make rosettes because I got a few questions on how I made these rosettes on the altered spool that I showed you guys a few videos ago. And I also have the die, so I thought I would show you how I use this die to create some rosettes as well. I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of a warning in advance that I am trying out my new camera because my last one finally died. It just wouldn't turn on anymore. So I have this new camera I'm kind of playing with and it's at a different angle so I'm a little more klutzy than normal. Um, not that I'm so graceful most of the time, but I apologize in advance if this video is a little bit more awkward or if my future ones are a little bit more awkward than usual because I'm trying to get used to this new camera. So anyway, I have this Alterations die by Tim Holtz. This is the mini paper rosettes and I love it. It's a lot of fun to play with. I showed this in a haul video several videos ago. But if you don't have this or you don't want to buy it, you can also make rosettes just using basically the easiest way would be have to would be to have a scoreboard of some kind, but you can do it without one if you really want to. Um, first let me show you what you get when you use this die. You get two rosettes from this die. Um, they're created from these strips of paper and then you get the two center pieces as well. And when you put it through your die cutting machine, you end up with a strip of paper that looks like this. One edge is kind of scalloped looking and then one edge is flat. And then hopefully you can see the little perforations in the paper. That makes it easier to fold up and you would just fold the thing, you know, basically kind of accordion style like this one. Okay until you get it all folded, then you would take the ends and glue them together like so. I use um, Scotch Quick Dry when I do that. And you'd end up with something like this, okay? And then basically what I do is I take my one inch circle punch and I punch a circle and I put that on the bottom because I like to have a base for mine because of the way I apply my glue. And then you're basically going to push this forward like so over that circle, push it together into kind of a tight little circle in the center. You see that right there? And then I usually take glossy accents or Scotch Quick Dry. I prefer glossy accents for this part. I put a big old blop of it in the center there and a little bit around the edge. And then while I hold this together with one hand, I take the centerpiece created by the die and usually I'm doing this the other way around, so here comes the klutzy part. And I put it in the center on top of that glossy accents and that little hole, and then I just kind of hold it in place. Obviously I want it to stay for about 30 to 45 seconds, and usually that's all it takes for the glossy accents. And you end up with a little rosette that resembles something like this, okay? Now this particular one, I wanted the flat end, so I actually pushed, if you can see that little scalloped end, I pushed that in the center. So I wanted that rounder end to it, okay? And that's just personal choice. Now, if you don't have the die, don't wanna get the die, you can still make rosettes pretty easily. And the great thing about making these rosettes is you don't need a ton of paper to do it. I used a lot of scraps that I had from 12 by 12 paper that I cut down. This is one of them. And basically, you just have to decide how big of a diameter you want your rosette to have. So in using the die, this top strip of paper will give you a rosette that's about an inch and a half. This one will give you a rosette that's about two inches. If you either want to make them yourself or make them different sizes than that, basically what you need to do is think about how thick you want that, how big you want the diameter of that rosette, and basically the width of the paper strip that you use times two will be the diameter of your rosette. So for example, this rosette is about three inches. So the strip of paper that I used was about an inch and a half, okay? Because what you have to think about is when you press it down to make the rosette, it's basically like two strips of paper side by side, okay? Hopefully that's clear. So once you've decided on the diameter and the width of your strip of paper, when I make them myself, I use, depending on the paper scrap, a piece that is 10 to 12 inches in length, okay? 
Then I decide if I'm gonna do a decorative edge like I did here with um, just a border punch. This is an EK Success one. I don't remember the name right now, but it's EK Success. And then I take my Martha Stewart scoreboard and I score every quarter of an inch and hopefully you can kind of see that. Okay, and if you do do a decorative edge, you need to be a little bit careful when you're scoring it so that you don't rip right through, for example, the little holes in this kind of lacy part, okay? And then once you do that, it's basically just folding the paper up like when you use the die. Oh, and my, sorry about the spool casting a shadow. Anyway, so you'd fold it up. The only difference is when I do this, because I don't have that perforated line, which makes it a little easier to fold, I do get out my bone folder, and as I'm folding the paper, when I'm a part way through, we're pretending I don't have the rest of this folded, when I'm part way through, every so often I'm gonna take this nice end of my bone folder and just flatten it, and kind of help the fold along a little bit, okay? It makes it a crisper fold for you when you don't have that perforated um, line to fold on. And then after that, the process is the same. I would take my little circle that I've punched out. The only difference in this case is that I would have two because I don't have this little piece from the die. I would use one from the for the bottom. I would do the same thing I did before and basically roll it up the way I want it with the edge that I wanted on the outside. And then I would put the other little circle right in the center, okay? again using glossy accents. So that's how I make them. Hopefully that was an understandable little tutorial. I wanted to show you a few that I had been making because like I said, I went a little crazy with the rosettes. Um, if I use this die, I mostly like them um, together and I'll show you those in just a second. I do have one that shows you the bigger piece here. It looks like that. This back little die is from Paper Tray Ink. And I just decorated it with a few little punched butterflies and a Wild Orchid Crafts flower. Now, I liked that. I thought it was cute, but I really wanted it to be bigger and kind of poofier to have more dimension. So I made a few more. I made a couple like this. These are just from scraps that I had laying around. Again with those little butterflies, but this time, hopefully you can kind of see I used some crackle accent in there and put a little pearl in the center. So I have those. And then I did one with a flower. And those were good, but then I thought that I could have some fun with some black paper scraps that I have, black and white. So I made some like this with the flower and hopefully you can see that little butterfly there. This is a paper tray ink die again. And hopefully you can see I inked up the edges this time, which I think really makes it kind of pop. And I did some more black ones. This time I put a little tag in there. Paper tray ink die as well inked up the edges again, okay. Here's another little one. This time, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I put a little circle behind it as well to give it a little more of a, like a, kind of a black edge to it. That is a, also a paper tray ink die, as is this little tag. And I think the sentiments are paper tray ink too, if I remember right. Here's another cute one. All of these black and white ones have a little bit of shimmer on them too from I think it's Lindy's spray that I used. And here's another last black one. And then I stumbled across some scraps I had from some um, pink paper. So you know I had to make some pink ones. Here's one. And on this one, hopefully you can see the rosettes have embossing powder on them. I just basically took the rosette and literally just put it right on the Versamark pad. That's way off center. Anyhow, and then sprinkled on the embossing pattern and embossed the rosettes. Put some stickles on there. And here's another one. A little bit different. Inked the edges, hopefully you can see that. And then I wanted to do a couple that didn't have any of these backs on it to see if I liked them. So I made one like this, which I think is pretty. It's kind of got a very vintage feel to it. And then one last one. I took a couple rosebud type flowers, inked the edges, put a little bit of seam binding. So here's a whole bunch of rosette examples, my pile of rosettes. I had lots of fun making them. 
super simple. They're great for any kind of project. Um, cards, scrapbook layouts, mini albums, altered projects, and they're super simple to make with or without the die. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Bye!